excited in the presence of the Lord. Amen. As Bishop began to speak on Friday night, I, was, I, I opened up my iPad and passed it to Sister Bo. I said, because they won't believe it. The very words that were coming out of his mouth were the words that were on my iPad. Amen. God gave me this message a few weeks ago and I just wrote some things down. And then uh, uh, Friday, he just allowed me to go in and work on it a little bit more. And I'm going to give you what the Lord gave me. Amen. Sometime God will confirm his word. Amen. Out of the mouths of two or three witnesses. Every word will be established. Our scripture lesson will be coming from Jeremiah 29 and 11. And then we're going to go to Isaiah 55, 8 and 9. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. Isaiah 55, 8, and 9, 8 through 9 says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. My subject today is when life doesn't make sense. I said when life. This wonderful life God gave us doesn't make sense. Amen, amen. All of us have had a time in our life when things just didn't make sense. In this second quarter of 2021, the year of epic transformation, we have been in our second quarter, the quarter that deals with rotation. And we found out rotation is the act of process of moving or turning around a central point. And we know that our central point is God. And everything else is moving around it. But I mean, uh, as we have stood still in our central port, some of us have felt the winds blowing. Some of us have felt the waves dashing. Oh, yes, in rotation, stuff happened that didn't make any sense. Like you thought you were headed in one direction, but then you turned around and you were in a whole different place. Oh, you thought a situation would work out one way, but it ended up working out in a completely different way. Even in your bundle package, things seem to turn and go in another direction. So as we look again at Jeremiah 29, 11, God tells Israel, I know. <laughs> the plans I have for you plans to prosper you and not harm you plans to give you hope and a future and most of us hear that verse and get happy about it but now we must understand this verse was written to a people who were in the midst of hardship and suffering written to a people who wanted or even needed an immediate rescue. These people were about to enter in 70 years of captivity. So it was written to a people who couldn't figure life out. In other words, they were people who had a situation. Some of us, if not all of us, are facing difficult situations. That word situations means a critical, trying, or unusual state of affairs. That word situations means problems. We find ourselves in the midst of situations. But as I was looking and, and researching that word situations, I ran across a word that is situated <laughs> and that word situated means settled it means established in a desired position or place it means not moving about so perhaps just perhaps <laughs> just perhaps our situations have designed to get us situated Sometimes we look at our situations, but we don't realize what our situations have been sent to do. But 
when I looked at that word situated, let me tell you again what it means. Established in a desired position or place. Not moving about. God is trying to get us to a place in our lives. He has a destiny in mind for us. He has a position in mind for us. But if he don't take us through situations, we won't ever get situated. So Jeremiah 29, 11 is not a promise to immediately rescue us from hardship or suffering or from our situations. But rather, we have a promise that God has a plan for our lives. Anybody know God has a plan for your life? He has a plan for our lives regardless of our situation. He can work in it or he can work through it, but he's going to work it out. All because he promised to prosper us and give us a hope and a future. Now, the, in the Bible, hope is the confident expectation of what God has promised. Anybody had any promises for God? I'm just now seeing promises realize that I got long time ago. Oh, but hope is the confident expectation that God has promised us. And then he promised not only to give us a hope, but he promised to give us a future. The future is time that is to come. It's what is going to happen. It's an expectation of advancement and development. In other words, we have to have a confident expectation of what God promised us. And that at the right time, it's going to happen. Not might or maybe, but that it will happen. But in the meantime, which means at the same time, he's developing us. Hey, hey, he's working us over. He's making us more like him. He's developing us. And then he's advancing us. He's pushing us forward. Sometimes little by little. And then sometimes he gives us a big shove. But we got to know that we are moving forward. Proverbs 16 and 9 reminds us that in our hearts, in a man's heart, we plan our course. But the Lord establishes our steps. (laughs) I love that scripture. You see, there have been times when I plan my course. I put some stuff together. To plan a course means to decide on and arrange in advance to design or make a plan. And if you've been like me, I'm a planner. I want to put some stuff together. I want to put a guide together. I want to say this is what we're going to do here. This is what we're going to do there. Oh, in our hearts, we plan our course. But after every now and then, we got to go a little further in that scripture. It says, but the Lord established my steps. Oh, anybody ever been going one way and then he ordered your steps <laughs> another way? Somebody's sitting in a place now when you say, I don't belong here, but he ordered it. Somebody's sitting in a place now where they say, I don't want to be here, but he ordered it. The Lord (laughs) establishes our steps. That word establish means usually has a proven track record of success. And I tell you, I don't know anybody that has a better track record of success than God. Than God. So we have to remember, we have to remember, no matter how well we plan, we will always end up where the Lord wants us, even if it seems unfair or wrong at first, even if it doesn't make sense. So four things I want to leave with you today as relating when life doesn't make sense. The first one is God has a plan, and that plan may not be the same as ours. <laughs> we, we, see, we seem to think that just because we got a plan, that God is on board with our plan. But God has a plan, and that plan just might not be the same 
as ours. Isaiah 55, 89 says it best. He said, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. For as far as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. You see, the human heart is filled with questions for God. Oh, there's the questions of why. Why am I here? Why did you allow this to happen to me? Why can't you get me out of this? Why won't you do for me what I ask you to do? And if we don't have a why, then we got the question of when. When are you going to move on my behalf? When are you going to do what you promised you're going to do? And if we don't have a why or a when, then we have a how. I don't know how you're going to do it, God. How are you going to fix this how are you gonna fix my marriage how are you gonna fix my my money how are you gonna fix my life situations we often wrestle with faith because of those questions how can we really trust the God that we don't understand how can we have faith when God's ways seem even cruel at times you see, when we try to comprehend God's way, we can become frustrated. So the psalmist reminds us that there is no searching hey, of his understanding. Anybody been on a search for God's mind? Anybody been able to look and search and see just what God is doing? His ways are higher than our ways. And his actions often do not make sense to our earthbound minds. So we question God's ways. When young people die, when our children die, when tragedies strike righteous people, when buildings fall, when pandemics just show up, when the wicked rip when the wicked prosper as a result of our questions, we beat on heaven's door with our demand for answers. But the only answer that comes is my ways are higher than your ways. Oh, God has a plan. He has a high plan. And that plan may not be the same as ours. He has a plan even when life doesn't make sense. The second thing I want you to remember is don't try to fix things. Warriors of praise, just surrender and trust. <laughs> Don't try to fix things. When life doesn't seem to go as planned, it can be tempted, tempting for us to try to take matters into our own hands and fix things. We seem to be the fix-it kind of people. Okay, God, <laughs> you didn't fix it. I'm getting ready to fix it. I just went through some things and I just said, oh, I'm just tired of this. I'm getting ready to fix it. There is a tendency in us to think that, when God, that God is not enough, that when he don't do what we want him to do, we turn around and do what we want to do. But if we try to understand God's ways from earth looking up, we won't find many answers. So God gives us a clue. He gives us a clue in the word higher. You see, his ways are not merely different from ours. They are higher than ours. In other words, his ways ways are better than ours. His ways are more superior than ours. His ways exist on a grander scale than ours. Oh yes, he parted the Red Sea because it fit his plan for Israel. He made the sun stand still so Joshua's army could defeat their enemies. He sent an angel to Peter get to get him out of jail. But God, I said God, allowed James to be executed. God has allowed some of his faithful servants to suffer terrible fates, even though he could have delivered them if he chose to. So when we try to make sense of these events, when we try and try and try to make sense of these events with our natural minds, we won't get anywhere. 
But instead, God invites us to come up higher. <laughs> to come up higher. To look to, and learn to see life from his perspective. Oh, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, amen, tells us to trust in the Lord with all our hearts, to lean not to our own understanding, but in all of our ways acknowledge him, and he will direct our paths. It's only when we surrender, warriors. It's only when we surrender our lives completely that we start to understand life's from God's perspective. You can't hold on to our, we can't hold on to our small finite minds and get the infinite mind of God. You see the word sense means perspective. And you know we got a little thing goes around like perspective is reality. Or my perspective is my reality. Yeah it's your reality but it may not be reality. So sometimes we got to go higher because God wants us to see it from his perspective. Our minds are too small to see what God sees. We don't see, sit high enough to see what God sees. So we have to let go. Let go of that rudder, Bishop. <laughs> let him steer the sheep. Ship. We have to let go and trust him even when life doesn't make sense the third thing i want you to remember when life doesn't make any sense is god will bring good out of what looks like a hopeless situation from earth looking up all we see is confusion anybody been there <laughs> i've been down here looking up to god and say i don't see nothing I don't, uh, perhaps you see, but I don't see. But right now, all I see is confusion all around me. But from heaven looking down, we see a plan unfolding. In Isaiah 46, 9 through 11, the Lord lays out his sovereign plan to use the Persian king Cyrus. He said, I am God. And there is no other. I am God. And there is none like me. I make known the end from the beginning. From ancient times. What is still to come. I say my purpose will stand. And I will do all that I please. Let me remind you today that God is sovereign. He can do whatever he wants to do he was sovereign yesterday he's sovereign today and he will be sovereign tomorrow in god's higher ways everything happens for a reason and will be woven into the fabric of god's good plan for those who love him god can and will bring good out of our situations even when life doesn't make sense and fourth, the fourth thing I want you to remember is don't be afraid to go into the unplanned. God's ways are higher than our ways because his ways are part of a bigger plan. You see, we, uh, we see only our small piece of the puzzle. God sees the finished work. You see, it's sort of like this. I'm standing right here by the, at this pulpit. And I can only see what is visible in front of me. But God is all the way out in California saying, but your destination is this far. As far as the earth is from heaven are my ways, are my plans. And so we're stuck right here to what we can only see because we will not go into the unplanned. We don't have to fear the unplanned. No matter what tomorrow brings, we don't ever have to be afraid. Joshua 1 and 9 puts it this way. Be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened and do not be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever. Somebody say wherever. The Lord your God is with you. Wherever you go. He said if you make your bed in hell, I'll be right there. If you go to the far parts of the earth, I'm going to be there. If you take a left, I'm right there. If you take
take a right, I'm right there. If you stand still, I'm right there with you. No matter what the Lord has planned for you and whether or not he has revealed his plan to you yet, you are not alone in your journey. We have a reason, have no reason to fear. Life does not always go at plan. Oh, I'm a witness. I had some serious plans. We looking at where we are right now in our life. I'm like, this ain't what I planned. Every now and then I look at Bishop and say, I'm still going with that original plan. <laughs> this can't be my life right now. <laughs> life doesn't always go as planned. If you have lived any amount of years, you know that life does not always go as planned. And sometimes life don't make no sense. But it's in these times that we have an opportunity to trust in the Lord, trust in his roadmap for our lives. We have to learn to embrace to put our arms around, to surrender to the unplanned, even when life doesn't make sense. In my conclusion, the Bible records people of God who face similar questions about things that didn't make sense. Asap pen, but as for me, <laughs> as for me, many of us have said, as for me, my feet had almost slipped. For I was envious of the boastful when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. Solomon, one of the wisest men who ever lived, uh, sought to understand the many questions. He tried to find answers to life enigmas by experimenting with every form of pleasure. In Ecclesiastes 2, we find that he tried alcohol. He tried beautiful gardens with plenty of fruit he acquired vast wealth in the end this wise man came to a conclusion well worth all consideration in Ecclesiastes 12 and 13 he said now all has been heard here is the conclusion of the matter we are to fear God and keep his commandments for this is the duty of mankind it is not my duty how my life turns out it's not my duty what road he puts me on. It's my duty to obey and keep his commandments. Solomon was concluding that even though there will be difficulties, and yes, there will be situations, life can make sense when we live according to God's instructions. When we live by every word that comes from his mouth, come on and put those hands together. You see, God is bigger than we let him be. We try to hold God to the smallness of our minds. But God is so much bigger. He's so much bigger. He bigger than your little mess. <laughs> he bigger than your little trouble. He bigger than your little complaint. He's look bigger than your little shortage. He's so much bigger than we let him be. But when life doesn't make sense, it's because he's about to do something completely unexpected. So Mount Calvary, I came to tell somebody today, it's time to expect the unexpected. I don't know who I'm talking to today. You are expecting something. But as we leave this season of rotation, it's time to expect the unexpected. Oh, he's about to show us a new aspect of his character. I know he's been your Jehovah Jireh, but he's about to provide for you like he's never provided before. I know he's your Jehovah Shalom, but you're about to have the peace that passive all understanding. I know he's been your Jehovah Rapha, but he's getting ready to heal you, mind, body, and soul. I know he's your Jehovah Shama, oh, but he's gonna show up even before the trouble hit. 
He's a show me God. Show me your troubles and I'll show your troubles your God. Show me your problems and I will show your problems your God. I dare you to come up higher. Come on up because he's about to give us a new experience with him. He's about to give us something we didn't even know we needed. He's about to set us up for breakthrough. To get us ready for a new season we didn't even know was coming. In other words, in other words, he's about to show up and show out. <laughs> he's about to show up and show out. Even in the midst of our situation. Oh, he's about to situate us. He's about to settle us. He's about to establish us in a desired position or place. The word situate also means money or possessions. When life doesn't make sense, it might not make sense to us, but it makes perfect sense to God. Oh, he can make sense out of the senseless. He can still make a way out of no way. He can still open doors that no man can shut. He can still close doors that no man can open. He's still a miracle worker. Oh, I still believe. I said I still believe. Even when life don't make no sense. Come on and put your hands together. Come on. Put those hands together. If you know you in a place where life ain't making no sense right now, put those hands together. Because you in a perfect place to expect the unexpected. God bless you today. Let's give God praise for I said, Lord, I got to preach three times this weekend. I said, gosh, but that was a powerful word. And if the word of God has blessed you today, we always, amen, give to God's house when God blesses us. We give by way of tithes and offering. And I want to say, amen, I thank God for such a wonderful ministry who have been giving consistently, amen, through pandemic up to this present moment. Because of your giving, the ministry has been blessed. For those that have been listening to us by way of social media, and this ministry has been blessing you, we thank you in your giving and your contributing. Our members that are listening while they're online tonight, today, we thank you, amen, in your giving. We believe the word of God that said when we bring into the storehouse tithes and offering, God will open up the windows of heaven and pour us out a blessing. We won't have room to receive. And the Bible says he will also, amen, rebuke the hands of the devourer. He will cause the curse to come off, get off of your house. And how many can say, I need God to reverse some curses? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Amen. And when you give, he'll give back to you good measures, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. I'm not just quoting the scripture to quote it. I'm quoting it because I live it. I know what the word of God says. And he'll cause men to give unto your bos bos bosom. He he'll let you know that people that don't even know your God will bless you. Somebody ought to give God praise. Hallelujah. He said, I'll bless them that bless you. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. Somebody ought to give God praise. Because in the midst of famine, he has always made a way. Do I have a witness in the house? In the midst of loss, he's always made a way. Hallelujah. In the midst of losing jobs and jobs shutting down and things happening, amen, because of situations and circumstances. How many in this sanctuary, how many that listen to us by way of social media know that God has made a way? You ought to shout on that right there. Amen. So with your tithes and offering, let's lift them to heaven. Father, we thank you and we bless you today. God, for a powerful word that has blessed our hearts that God just deal with life situations we need that but we had at the end of the message we were left with hope that you would make a way and we give you glory honor and praise so today God we give and this tide becomes holy unto you 
and as it blesses your church, bless your people. And God will give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. Let everybody say, praise him. Amen. You may give it this time. Amen. Those that are listening by way of social media, you can give by way of Cash App. And give the fire. It should be right there before you. Amen. So we want to say to all, amen, again, thank you for those that's been listening. Amen. We look forward to seeing you next week. We say unto you, the blessing of the Lord be upon your life. Let everybody stand at this time. Glory to God. Father, we leave this place. We will not leave your presence. But let the sweet communion of your Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide, and be with us henceforth now and forever. Let the people of God say, Amen.